All right, so I got a couple things I wanted to talk about today, um, rather than just kind of like rambling on about shit that's going on in my life. Uh, I've actually got some topics. First of all, I know the quality in the last video uh, of my mic in particular was kind of trash. Uh, I, I messed around with voice meter a little bit and ended up uh, fucking something up with the with the sliders. So uh, a lot of times it would sound like my voice was like cutting out or something. And hopefully that shouldn't be happening this time. Uh, number two is I adjusted my camera angle so we you don't have to see like the window. <clears throat> So you don't have to see the window in the back and it's all blown out. Now I know my face, uh, there it is. I know my face still looks a little white uh, from the sun rays coming in, but we've got good news. A little channel update. I went ahead and I purchased a new webcam. I know, big boy purchases. Uh, this one's gonna have like a ring light. It'll be able to record in like 1080p 30. Uh, I wanted to get one that was 1080 60, but uh, I couldn't find any that had like a ring light that were under like a hundred dollars. Uh, this one is going to be like, uh, or I think it was like $50 because I got it used on Amazon, but it'll be able to record in 720 60 and 1080 30. So uh, hopefully, you know, the quality of the videos is going to be improving to, uh, you know, match the quality of the audio here. Uh, I'm gonna have to do something about all these lights or uh, at least about the sunlight coming through because that shit still looks terrible on camera and even with this new angle it doesn't really fix the issue as much uh, the reason I have the mic so close to my mouth is because I went back into voice meter and um, I wanted to keep the AC on because it gets so hot in here um, and I I'm still wearing jeans from work and I start like sweating just sitting here without the AC or the fan on. So in order to have some, I guess, decent audio quality while I'm not roasting alive, uh, I messed with the settings in voice meter a bit and I had to turn the audibility down. Audibility? Audibility? I think it's audibility. Yeah, audibility. So I had to turn the audibility down of my mic. So, you, I mean, you can still hear it. <clears throat> you can still hear the AC in the back just a little bit, but it's not like a fucking like it was before uh the only problem is i have to keep the mic like super close to my face so you can even hear anything hopefully that should be fixed uh if not i'll see if i can like run the ac before i record for a bit and shut the door back there so uh it stays cool in here and i won't have to keep the mic so close to me or the ac on but the main topic i wanted to talk about today is actually about mixing your social life with your work life now this is something that i have tried in the past with several different jobs and with several different groups of people now this of course is my personal experience only this isn't a fact i'm just going to be sharing uh what has happened to me in the past when i tried to make friends with the people i work with now this has kind of worked like once uh, in my first job when I, I worked at a uh, at a bar and grill as my first job when I was like 16 or 17 I don't remember but I was a bar back so I was a mix between like a bus boy and like a bartender's uh, assistant I guess I would just run and grab them like beer or liquor uh, whenever they needed it fill up their ice trays clean off the plates for the customers all that boring stuff but I had some coworkers who lived like right across the street from the bar I worked at. So after work, sometimes I would go over there and we would like hang out and kick it for a bit before I went home, which was, I mean, that was cool. We went to the beach a couple times and surprisingly nothing from what I remember, nothing bad really even happened. Um, and, and that's what I was saying earlier, how these are just some of my personal experiences. None of this is like fact or anything. Uh, I think the only reason that really worked is because I was young and I also had a couple friends from like school who also worked at that job with me so it was a lot easier to kind of like I guess hang out with the people because I had some of my closer friends who had, I, I'd known for years at the time also working with me and hanging out with them as well but getting on to more recent experiences where I tried to make uh, some friends 
with a couple co-workers. Um, I'm going to give you three examples, three recent examples of times I have tried to befriend some of the people I work with. Now, the first example I have is when I worked at the pizzeria that is in a, a pretty popular tourist town. It's called Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Now, at this pizzeria, there weren't many people close to my age uh, or who I even wanted to hang out with, you know, let alone at work, but outside at all. So, for the most part, I didn't have many options, but there was one kid. Well, I guess guy, because he's actually like six months older than me. But there was one person there who, uh, had he not reached out to me and said that he wanted to hang out, I probably would have never talked to him. In all honesty, I'm just, I'm not really the type to go out of my way to uh, make friends. Uh, I guess you could call it being antisocial, but uh, I don't know. I just don't really like talking to people. So he reached out to me and we started like going to the Waffle House after work or going to like uh, any restaurants just to get something to eat and kind of hang out. We started actually hanging out on our off days as well and we became pretty close, but some um some unfortunate events happened and we no longer hang out uh the context of what actually happened is a little bit personal and i don't feel like uh, i need to go into detail for this video just know that it was not a i mean our friendship lasted for i want to say about seven or eight months which isn't that long compared to some of the friends I made back home, but also back home, I made all my friends through high school. So I saw them every day and, you know, we played sports. We all went to the same school, hung out around town, uh, that sort of thing. Now that's example one. Example two that I want to give is when I was selling timeshares for uh, a company I'm not going to name, uh, but just know that timeshares are a complete scam. Don't ever buy one please don't take this take this video as advice if you ever get pulled into one of those bullshit presentations where they offer you like a discount on some attractions or or, or whatever they're trying to give you you know uh, uh, cheaper tickets to a, a ride or you know inexpensive room tickets there's a catch they'll try and they'll try and get you with that little 90 minute presentation bullshit but as someone who worked there and tried to persuade these people to buy this shit it will never be a 90 minute presentation. You're going to be there for roughly like three hours, at least double the time that they advertised it. Um, the trick to that, I'm telling you this right now, is after the 90 minutes, you are allowed to leave and you can still get your gifts. See, if you leave before the 90 minutes, they're not going to give you whatever discounts or coupons or whatever the hell they promised you. You just need to keep track of your time, stay there for 90 minutes and interrupt that salesperson. Tell them to eat shit and tell them you want your gifts. That's it. But at this timeshare sales place, uh, I met, I, I actually met my girlfriend, um, which in this instance, it was one of the rare times I actually reached out to someone to befriend them. I was walking by her talking to someone else at the little marketplace outside. And uh, I just kind of sat down and we started chatting and uh, you know, the rest is history. We hung out a few times with some people at work and she was always the only person who was enjoyable to be around. There was no one else from that job that I still communicate with to this day. And I mean, some people, the thing is people seem cool when you're at work because they're putting on this work persona for um, not only their own coworkers, but for their bosses and for the clientele. They're um, showing themselves in a way that they want other people to perceive them as. So when you hang out with them outside of work, and especially when you mix together things like drinking, for example, you start to see their true selves and who they actually are. And, uh, you know, that's, that's when you really get to know the real them. And oftentimes the real them is not someone you want to uh, associate with. So trying to think if I have any like examples from that job that I could use in particular there was one co-worker there who uh, I went over his house and we hung out a few times and he was just 
uh, a very strange individual and not strange in the way of like quirky or just a little bit weird he was just his he was a very slimy person he would I don't know he was, he was just a weirdo and I, I feel like that's all I really need to say about him but overall at that place only good thing that came out of it was my girlfriend now we move on to the most recent case which is something that actually happened this past weekend now I've kind of got a rule because of these other examples I've given you my rule is generally do not hang out with co-workers outside of work just never do it it's never gonna end well you're not gonna make friends and it's just gonna be um, an awkward or shitty time that you now have to deal with when you go back to work because whatever bad stuff happens over the weekend you know those same people are gonna see you when you come in um, when you go back to work and you're gonna see them and that is no fun so this past weekend against my better judgment my girlfriend and I went to hang out with a couple people we work with and uh, needless to say um, some drinking was involved I was the DD so uh, I didn't really drink that much but we were also hanging out you know for a whole day literally from the time we got off because we work third shift we get off at about um, 7 a.m. so we went home my girlfriend and I took a shower and we went and hung out with our co-workers from about 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. it was a whole 12 hours that we hung out with them and um, you know I went 24 hours without sleep because of this which I've done before it's nothing crazy but you know I would have preferred to get my rest anyway everything started out pretty okay um, you know they were nice and you know it was a cool little hangout we were playing some board games uh, at this little outdoor uh, bar that uh, yeah, we were playing board games at this little outdoor bar and everything was going surprisingly well. I was almost like thrown back by how good of an experience it was so far until one of our co-workers got a little bit, I guess, a little bit drunker than uh, anyone there would have preferred. And he began to open up a lot uh, about a lot of personal details. And I knew that the only reason he was doing that was because of how drunk he had gotten. Uh, he started saying things like we're his best friends and telling us all these personal details about his life. And keep in mind, this is the first and last time we ever hung out outside of work. So that made me a little bit, I guess, uncomfortable. But it was nothing too off-putting um, you know this is, I, I've had people come to me about their issues in the past and um, I don't want to sound like a dick by saying this but I'm not a guidance counselor you know I'm not the person that you can just dump off all your problems and I'm gonna have some magic solution to make your life better I'm just gonna you know I'll listen but I would prefer to be left out of it because I've got my own problems. Everyone has their own problems. And if they're really that bad, you should seek professional therapy. You shouldn't start spilling your guts to uh, somebody you work with. Like, I'm just a normal guy. I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not the person to be dealing with any trauma or mental anguish that you might be having. So anyway, he was telling us about all that and it, it was a little weird but whatever and then we decide to go to a um a little cliff where you can look out over the city uh that i live in and just kind of hang out there and i was like all right that's cool we brought the board games and but before we stop there uh i i'll take responsibility for this i had mentioned we stop at a gas station and get a couple drinks now i was kind of insinuating like a like beer like a Mike's hard or I don't know a white claw if you're a fucking loser but my other co-worker heard that and immediately said oh all right let me look up the nearest liquor store 
Now, when he said that, I was like, uh, I don't know. It doesn't really sound like a doesn't really sound like a good idea to take you know hard liquor toward a place where you can potentially fall to your death. But again, against my better judgment, I agreed. So we went and we got a big bottle of that red, white, and berry uh, Smirnoff. I'll throw a picture of it. It's it's like every uh, fucking high schooler and college kid's favorite drink because it's so sweet. Um, but we got that and then we went there and, you know, we stayed there for a little bit. And needless to say, we ended up, or more so, they, they ended up killing the whole bottle. And uh, one of our coworkers, the one who had been very uh, vocal about our newfounded friendship and, um, you know, very open about his own personal issues, ended up passing out drunk, and then we had to carry him, uh, I don't want to say a mile, it might be like a little bit under a mile, back to uh, the car. Now, here in Tennessee, the terrain is very hilly. It is very, um, uh, well, to give you an example, back home in New Jersey, there weren't any mountains, there weren't any hills per se. I mean, if you went on like trails, you might encounter a couple small hills here and there, but there was nothing crazy versus here in Tennessee, pretty much everywhere you go is on an incline. So we had to carry this man who was, I want to guess about 250 pounds of dead weight up, uh, up and down several hills and let me tell you that was not fun we i actually ran ahead and had to grab a stranger to come and help us because it was only me my girlfriend and another co-worker to carry this guy so um to that stranger i want to give another thank you if you ever happen to see this video um without him he probably we probably wouldn't have been able to carry this dude as far as we did but the four of us traversed the rocky terrain and you know eventually we made it back to the car now during this whole process of us carrying this near lifeless man he had thrown up on himself i'm pretty sure he pissed himself and we had walked through uh a lot of overgrown areas and it had gotten dark so i couldn't see what we were walking through and but I'm pretty sure I walked through uh, uh, several patches of poison ivy. So for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to have to deal with that. And that's going to be a bitch because I hate I'm highly allergic to poison ivy and I, I hate it so much. But, you know, after we got this guy back to his car, um, you know, obviously we didn't let him drive home. But he slept in his car. I think he lost his wallet. Um, it, it was just overall not a very fun night it, it put kind of a strain on uh, my relationship with my girlfriend just because of how stressed we were and uh, just how poorly of a turn that it took toward the later end of the day and if there's anything I learned from it it's just to definitely not hang out with your co-workers outside of work um, but yeah that's pretty much all I got